Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 32nd lecture of surface engineering. Uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed the theory, the basically the, the reason why diffusion coating is, uh, why does it take place at all? Why does diffusion layer form and what is the mechanism by which diffusion occurs and what are the elements which are generally uh, applicable for diffusion coating and so on and also alluded to some of the practices. But in this lecture, we are going to talk specifics about uh, the diffusion coating, diffusion coating processes concerning the three main diffusions here, the aluminum, chromium and silicon, because as I mentioned in the previous lecture, these are the three most important elements which actually provide high temperature oxidation resistance or protection in aggressive environment to metallic substrates. So, aluminizing as the name suggests actually involves uh, material which actually uh, uh, is uh, created uh, or uh, creates a thin aluminum rich or aluminum alloy rich layer. So, this is coated or the entire purpose is twofold. One is atmospheric corrosion resistance, not necessarily at high temperature including at room temperature and also elevated oxidation and environmental uh, resistance, resistance against high temperature oxidation and environmental degradation. This process uh, is very much competitive and comparable with the so called zinc coating on steel, but remember zinc coating is never exposed to high temperature, whereas uh, whenever you expect the steel or metallic substrates to be exposed to high temperature like we took the example of the compressor blades made up of titanium or uh, the turbine blades uh, made up of single crystal nickel alloys uh, exposed to 1050 or so. At such high temperature, we require uh, something different than zinc and aluminum is one of the biggest bet for the, that kind of a condition. But there is a large similarity because both zinc and aluminum provide a sacrificial layer. So, essentially still the base substrate will remain cathodic, but the top layer of uh, either zinc or aluminum, let us talk about aluminum particularly, will actually react and then form an oxide layer, which uh, so it sacrifices itself to protect the underlying substrate which is steel or uh, some other alloy. Now, aluminum coating actually is uh, more expensive than zinc coating, but when you are talking about high temperature, you do not have a choice because zinc is not an effective uh, oxidation protection element at high temperature because it has a tendency not only for reaction, but also uh, reaching the volatile state. But so for high temperature, this is certainly cost effective. So the aluminum coating on steel or uh, other metallic alloys uh, can be uh, uh, obtained by hot dip coating, hot dip mechanism, uh, roll, uh, rolled in coating spray coating or pack cementation a solid state process. The important thing is that the coating that we apply actually grows with time. So, when we coat aluminum on steel, uh, then um, this is how it appears uh, as the cross section. So, essentially you will have a, a coated layer and then you have a, also an interdiffusion layer, where this is this will this first layer will be very rich in aluminum and then aluminum concentration as a function of depth will decrease and then this is the substrate which is unaffected. So, this layer thickness will depend upon the process parameters typically the chemical potential, temperature, time and so on. So, when aluminum diffuses, see for example, when carbon diffuses in carburizing, it does not form any of the compounds, it does not form cementite for that matter. It diffuses, goes deep inside and we retain carbon, then we convert that solid solution into martensite by certain heat treatment. So, the hardness and wear resistance comes from 
the phase transformation product. In case of uh, nitriding, we do form nitrides and they are the principal reasons for wear resistance, but that is done uh, the nitrides that form at high temperature, but the application is at room temperature. Now, when you expose steel or nickel or titanium or these elements which have high affinity for oxygen to high temperature, you need elements to form a diffuse coating onto the surface which will sacrifice itself, form an oxide and prevent further ingress of anions for, for example, oxygen. Now, this is done not necessarily through a solid solution layer. So, the surface is an alloyed layer which will have higher concentration of aluminum or chromium or silicon onto the surface, but they actually are confined to a thin layer, but they do not necessarily form only a solid solution of aluminum in iron or nickel or titanium. Instead, they are known to form certain intermetallic phases and these intermetallic phases are very easy to understand as to why do they form when you, when you refer to the corresponding say iron aluminum or nickel aluminum or titanium aluminum kind of a binary phase diagram. You will see there are multiple intermetallic phases possible to be formed in these binary systems. So, in case of iron typically uh, one such eta phase uh, that form uh, is an iron aluminide. Now, this is beneficial and matter of concern both beneficial because they are extremely stable has very high melting temperature and prevents oxygen uh, ingression or cation say iron or titanium to move out. So, they form a barrier layer. So, this is the kind of barrier layer that we are talking about and in fact, this barrier layer that we form aluminum rich layer will grow with time if we increase the resistance time in the in the furnace in the uh, in the diffusion coating uh, chamber. So, the cross section actually will show us that it is not pure aluminum, it actually is an aluminum rich matrix phase with lot of these intermetallics. The thickness of that layer essentially will depend upon the time at a given isothermal condition and this k the constant here is actually um, proportional to the diffusion coefficient and hence one can write this k also very similar to a diffusion uh, coefficient equation and can determine the value of k at a given temperature. So, this once this k is known then we can predict what would be the thickness. So, sigma here is the thickness of the diffusion layer at a given temperature T for at the time of exposure small t. And this is important for us to design uh, the experiment through which we actually use or develop such coating. So, there are multiple factors uh, process uh, parameters which actually affect the thickness and the integrity of this coating. So, as I said this is an intermetallic layer that we form. So, we have to be careful as to what is the time that we expose to, because otherwise the layer that you form will be extremely hard and protective all right, but also is fairly brittle and most importantly will have a very different crystal structure and uh, coefficient of thermal expansion than the underlying metallic substrate. So, the coating substrate interface will be prone to development of very high stress as the layer of the thickness increases, uh, thickness of the layer increases and hence uh, there could be spoliation or crack formation at this uh, coating substrate interface. So, the thickness or the interfacial layer adha adhesion will depend upon the dipping time and temperature. Now, if it is steel then the carbon content is important because if you have fair amount of carbon then uh, they actually uh, not only change the growth rate and morphology, but also the composition of the intermediate layer that you form. So, for low carbon steel you actually can have a higher higher thickness of the coating uh, of the and, and the intermediate layer. So, that means uh, ingression of aluminum faces less difficulty to diffuse in if the carbon content of the steel is low, 
but if the steel contains lot of uh, atoms in the interstitial positions like carbon, then diffusion already the surface is stressed and further diffusion of aluminum uh, actually will be more difficult. The molten metal viscosity, the bath we are talking about is very important and also the wetting conditions, the wettability or the uh, angle of um, uh, the surface, uh, the angle of wetting also is uh, very, very important. So, we may actually at times add certain additives to change the bath composition, so that the wettability increases at the surface. The surface roughness, we are talking about the, uh, the component which is being coated. So, sur roughness of that surface is important because uh, generally uh, the adherence to some extent depends on the surface roughness. In fact, little bit of roughness is actually beneficial because it causes a pegging effect or mechanical interlocking effect. But if it is too rough, then the penetration will be non-uniform and the tip will melt or tip will actually get thicker coating and as a result the tip may get dislodged because of uh, the brittleness developed. So, thickness and morphology uh, will as I said uh, can be changed by certain additions like silicon into the melt. So, instead of pure aluminum if you have aluminum silicon then of course, the wettability decreases changes and uh, actually wettability increases and bath temperature can be little lower but more importantly you actually create uh, a different kind of a morphology onto the surface. So, typically the if you increase higher and ha higher amount of silicon then the depth of the alloyed layer decreases with, uh, with, the, uh, with the distance. So, th the depth of the layer decreases as we increase silicon concentration in the aluminizing path. So, in industry scale the process actually is done continuously not as a batch process unlike uh, what is done in carburizing or nitriding cases not always nitriding, but carburizing pack carburizing for example, for sure or even uh, pack cementation processes uh, even for aluminum it can be a batch process, but in industry scale when you use a molten bath it can be completely a, a continuous process. So, you feed in sheets of small thicknesses may be millimeter less than a millimeter much maybe much less than a millimeter whatever is the sheet thickness you do not necessarily bring them in the form of a coil. So, you feed in use a welder to create continuous uh, uh, aluminum sheet train of alumin train of aluminum sheet and instead of coiling you actually make them such loop in, in the f uh, and you do it through a tower. So, you go back and forth and then you accommodate a large length of aluminum sheet in this form. The sheet is fed through these rollers and goes into the furnace. So, in between you can have certain uh, annealing process to remove surface stresses or also any other kind of uh, heterogeneity in the microstructure. Then they are subjected to this uh, uh, aluminizing bath and it goes back and forth uh, into the bath and uh, this is the residence time here and the temperature are the two most important process parameters and as soon as the coating is over you immediately cool rapidly, because you do not want to extend the time of exposure to high temperature or bath temperature or near to the bath temperature, because once the process is over then you do not want any further diffusion to take place and to prevent diffusion the easiest way is to reduce the temperature, because the coefficient will be so low that diffusion effect will be negligible. So, you do rapid cooling and then you draw it there is a, a online mechanism through which you can measure the gauge thickness of the coating and then it uh, goes through. Um, so, the excess by the by the excess uh, uh, aluminum sticking to the surface is removed through an air jet. So, the air jet removes the uh, surface uh, excess uh, aluminum and also uh, quenches the surface temperature. So, it goes through uh, this kind of a train and then uh, so we also have a loop tower where certain chemical treatments are done maybe another protective uh, another treatment to make the coating more adherent. Uh, certain types of surface conditioning the physical conditioning of the surfaces then um, there will be um, inspection non destructive evaluation uh, through radiography or through certain visual inspections and so on. 
and then the whole coil comes out and then coiled into large uh, you know very several kilometer uh, length of coils so this is the overall process so typically this is the temperature we are talking about temperature can be even higher but this is good enough depending on the particular application uh, so we need certain pretreatment which involves surface cleaning uh, both acid and um, alkali bath cleaning so the surface is fresh metal and not carrying oxide thin oxide layer due to atmospheric oxidation then we do fluxing again to increase the wettability of the surface so that it's fresh and it actually comes in contact with uh, directly with aluminum and aluminum can immediately wet the surface and form aluminum and not any mixed oxide or uh, uh, varied composition coating. So, then the coating happens in the hot tip bath uh, like here and um, so which is a molten bath. So, this is a molten bath and then we have to do the after treatment which is wiping, air blasting or removal of excess aluminum and even rolling to make the uniform coating depth and uh, physical form and they are withdrawn from the coating bath and then coiled after the uh, mandatory evalu uh, evaluation of the surface condition. So, calorizing is a process where unlike the previous hot dipping where we apply aluminum through the from the gaseous or the vapor state. Here also we form intermittently compounds of various types and typically applicable say in case of uh, stainless steel. So, when you expose stainless steel to aluminum say austenitic stainless steel then you actually can form various uh, aluminides or intermediate phases. So, this is comparable to the hot dip aluminizing, but obviously differs in the fact that here the diffusion of aluminum is occurring in the solid state the substrate is completely there is no molten layer at all on the in contact with the surface and the entire amount of aluminum is coming from the vapor state. So, the objectives would be just like the previous case high temperature oxidation resistance, erosion or abrasion resistance, any uh, protection against carbon ingress. I mean in, in various cases for example, stainless steel or, or for that matter any other steel or certain materials uh, when they are exposed to carbon containing atmosphere there is a possibility carbon can come in and it may not be beneficial because it may form uh, certain interstitial compounds or change the crystal structure. So, carbon ingress must be prevented and this kind of aluminide layer actually prevents carbon ingression. Uh, also, this is helpful for stress corrosion cracking uh, if you to have such aluminide layer uh, and resistance to corrosion and erosion by any other kind of molten metal. So, if you have a bath which actually has this molten zinc or other metals, there could be a large corrosive attack and that can be prevented by having such aluminide coating or aluminum coating. Also protection against non-metals like these corrosive gases, liquids and ashes and so on. So, typically a calorized surface will have very high amount of aluminum. So, this is the depth and this is the uh, concentration. So, aluminum will be very high nickel is generally low, but if you have nickel already in the substrate that will be fairly high only below a certain layer. So, this is the diffusion layer altogether, but within the diffusion layer we see that the surface is rich enriched with aluminum and having very low content of other elements like nickel, chromium and so on. Um, we are talking about a, a, an alloy which contains all these elements. So, this is the base level of chromium and aluminum base level of aluminum. So, there is no aluminum in the substrate or very little aluminum in the substrate, but very high aluminum in the uh, in the surface. So, this diffusion layer is because of the uh, principles of diffusion coating, but still I, I must point out that this uh, dip is fairly sharp. So, the interface coating substrate interface is much sharper than let us say uh, carburizing carburized layer. We can also apply silicon as an element to protect uh, substrate from high temperature oxidation through a basically a pack process. Uh, pack you pack the silicon containing elements or substances in a retort and the intention is to get silicon in the nascent form. So, that means you will use a certain precursor say silicon carbide 
and uh, also use silicon tetrachloride in the gaseous form you bubble through the substrate uh, as through the mixture containing silicon carbide and this will liberate uh, silicon nascent silicon and uh, that silicon can now diffuse into the surface. So, we are talking about uh, in case of aluminum uh, coating we understood that we are talking typically a few tens to few hundred micrometers of aluminum rich layer, but in the limit it can go to several millimeters, but usually silicon rich layers are less than a millimeter purely because the silicides that form instead of aluminides are actually uh, uh, slightly more complex in crystal structure and also form slightly more brittle layer. So, the, the silicon layer can be formed on low carbon steels and uh, I would say anything between 8 to 10 percent at the most 12, 13 percent would be the silicon content on the surface. You can get fairly high hardness, but resistance against both corrosion and oxidation at high temperature is the benefit that we derive. Instead of aluminum or silicon, we can use chromium for the similar purpose. Here the precursor will be pure chromium powder with aluminum oxide powder mixed with that and then we heat this salt into um, to create this uh, vapor phase. The, uh, the reactant here will be uh, ammonium iodide. So, that chromium reacts with am ammonium iodide and forms chromous iodide, which is a fairly unstable compound. Comes in contact with the solid metal, reacts at typically about this temperature and then liberates uh, chromium from chromium iodide. So, iodine comes back into the into the atmosphere, again reacts with chromium, forms chromous iodide and so on. So, this is how the process continues and it is a batch process. So, beyond a certain period of time, you need to recharge um, uh, ammonium iodide, so that uh, the remaining part of chromium can be uh, utilized. A similar process uh, based on CVD chemical vapor deposition can be also used for diffusion coating of chromium on steel or uh, any other metallic systems based on diffusion principles, very similar diffusion principles. Um, so, uh, another interesting process which is not necessarily a diffusion based process, but is used for very similar purposes. So, I thought I would just include them here for comparison and these are called roll bonding process. In fact, they can be roll bonding, they can be diffusion bonding and so on. So, typically when you when you talk of roll bonding, you are talking about two or more metals as uh, parallel layers fed into a roll and then roll together. So, when you roll together, if the interfaces between different layers is free from grease or dirt or water or oil. Uh, that means, completely metal to metal surface is completely guaranteed and without any discontinuity. Then during rolling the deformation occurs and during deformation there will also be possibility of mechanically driven interdiffusion. So, that means, the metal from sheet A diffuses into sheet B and sheet B atoms can also diffuse into sheet A. So, there will be an uh, diffusional layer, uh, interdiffusion layer. So, for the mating surfaces should be very well cleaned, ground, degreased to increase the friction coefficient and any amount of oxide layer or compound layer has to be completely removed by either chemical or physical means. So, now you actually do a, a roll bonding or accumulative roll bonding when you push them into the roll. In fact, there is no necessity all of them should have same thickness. Actually, the layer to be coated has a much smaller thickness, typically a foil of aluminum for example can be rolled together on sheets of metal, even non-metal. So, um, because there is no direct diffusional process, thermally activated diffusional process involved. So, we actually rely upon high reduction ratio and uh, that is when the, the interdiffusion takes place due to, due to mechanically driven plastic flow. So, uh, when, when somebody sections the, uh, the diffusion bonded layer, then one sees that there could be a uh, certain amount of diffusional layer. Now, question is where, why do we need such a process? What is uh, the limitation of aluminizing, chromizing or siliconizing process? Think of a heat exchanger or uh, large body uh, heat transfer medium. So, you are talking about several meters by easily a meter width 
to subject such wide and long sheet for diffusional coating, you require a furnace of that nature or a bath of that nature if it's a batch process. If it's a continuous process, then you actually should have so much of consumption, so much of demand to make it batch process. But for smaller substrates, for smaller areas or, or a limited number of applications, limited consumption, yet wider surface area where you need such protective coating, roll bonding is a typical method. It can be a not only necessarily batch process, it can be also a continuous process. So, this is the aluminum metal and this is a copper metal and this is how you actually form a clad of aluminum copper through these roll bonding processes. But remember here the pressure whatever we apply is applied only when you are passing through the roll, so temporary transient. You can also do a diffusion bonding process where you have alternate layers of let us say a, a grey and a red metal, two different types of metals and they are pressed together in they have uniform thickness in they and also arrange in some alternate sequence and now when you apply pressure and then expose to high temperature. So, now diffusion takes place all along the surface throughout the surface at this high temperature for a period of time and they form a complete diffusion bonding. So, this is diffusion bonding and not necessarily diffusion coating. This also is roll bonding and not necessarily coating. So, you actually retain exact composition of the coating material and like in the previous cases where the composition varies various aluminides, various silicides or chromides form. Also this is in case of roll bonding it is a it is a dynamic process, in case of diffusion bonding it is a static process. So, you actually place it inside the furnace and then uh, it is a batch process where you expose for certain period of time. So, they also have their set of utilities particularly as I mentioned for large heat exchangers or any other uh, thermal uh, heat exchange processes. So, what did we discuss? We discussed about um, the typical differences between aluminizing and pack cementation. So, aluminizing is a hot dip process whereas, pack cementation is a solid state process primarily. Uh, so, molten bath allows the aluminum uh, nascent aluminum to come to the surface and then diffuse in whereas, in pack cementation you take it to uh, you use a take the help of sodium fluoride to take to the aluminum fluoride vapors condition and then allow ALF to decompose and liberate aluminum to the surface. So, obviously, um, in the in the hot dip process uh, this uh, you are exposing uh, to not only high temperature, but uh, you are guaranteeing a very high wide coverage, very uh, good um, uh, coverage to the entire surface area. The process can be actually faster because it can be a continuous process. So, you can pull from one end to other and can make kilometer long of long uh, strips coated with aluminum uh, and coil them into large coils at a faster rate. Uh, we actually must realize that the vapor pressure plays a very important role in this all pack cementation processes or all diffusional coating processes because the element should have actually very high vapor pressure so that it has a natural tendency at when exposed to high temperature to go into the vapor phase and saturate the atmosphere with that particular vapor. So, it should have actually a vapor pressure higher than the substrate metal. Uh, aluminum coating uh, is better than galvanizing not always but certainly is better than galvanizing at uh, when the temperature is high at high temperature. Uh, the process parameters when we talk of all these diffusional coatings are typically temperature, time, then uh, the concentration of the species or the chemical potential of the species, um, surface condition, the viscosity of the bath if it is a dip process and uh, surface roughnesses, physical conditions and so on. And we have to be uh, very careful about maintaining such conditions or these parameters. So, roll bonding is a process where we actually can cover wide area and we do not necessarily have to expose to high temperature. So, room temperature process can cover wider surface area 
and can actually coat with uh, something whose composition remains the same, does not change. Other uh, utility or the merit points, the demerit is that it is a roll, rolling process. So, you cannot do for complex shapes, you cannot uh, press uh, under the roll something which has a non-uniform surface contour. So, diffusion coating, diffusional processes, diffusional bonding and roll bonding, they are very similar, but not exactly the same. In diffusion coating, with, you are talking without no application of pressure, both in diffusion bonding and roll bonding, you are talking about application of pressure, but these are essentially high temperature processes and allows diffusion is the primary reason for such coating and mechanical activation also in diffusion coating and mechanical activation is the main reason for roll bonding processes. So, uh, these are the uh, processes which uh, we wanted to discuss. So, that uh, this is how we actually can create fairly high protection of metallic substrates against high temperature oxidation or other environmental degradation processes. So, thank you very much for your attention.